Hey guys, this is part two of the triple five timer series and I'll be showing you how to put together this circuit utilizing bystable mode. So pressing the right button turns the light on and pressing the left button turns it off. So essentially this is a latch. No matter how many times we press this button, it'll stay on. But as soon as we press this button, it'll turn off. To construct this circuit, the first thing you want to do is place your IC in the breadboard. The next thing you're going to want to do is place the push button and then place the other push button. Now connect the chip to VCC and ground. Pull the push buttons down with two 1K resistors. And also connect the push buttons to ground. Now connect up one of your push buttons to pin 4 of the IC. And then connect up the other push button to pin 2 on the IC. Now connect pin 6 to ground. Then connect your LED to pin 3 on the IC. And add a current limiting resistor. I'm just using a 3.3K, but use whatever will protect your light. And lastly, we're going to add a small disk capacitor to pin 5 of the IC. And now your circuit should be complete. Now if we go ahead and hook up power. I'm using 5 volts, by the way. Now... What should happen when we press this, the light should turn on, press it off, the light should turn off, just like that. We've successfully completed our bi-stable 555 timer latch. Alright, if we go ahead and hook this up to an oscilloscope with channel 2 purple connected to the output and channel 1 yellow connected to our push button so when I press the push button you can see our button here turns on and our output here our LED light also turns on so as soon as we press our button here what will happen is we press a button and then there's a rounded 200 and a second delay and then the IC turns on the output turns it on just like that and this layout is actually a relatively clean layout so you don't need to do much to fix it but if you can see here there is a small voltage spike and that's just natural because the NE555 timer is trying to draw lots of current and then it realizes it doesn't need that much so it drops off again just like that and I figured out a way to fix that. All right, so to fix this, the first thing I did was I took off our LED and current limiting resistor. Then we're going to add an NPN BJG transistor I'm using a 3904, but any NPN BJT will work. And we're gonna go ahead and put that right next to the IC. Now, I'm gonna hook up our output. I'm using a 10K resistor, we're gonna hook up our output to the base of the transistor just like that. Then we're gonna add our LED from the collector of our transistor to the other side of the breadboard. Oops. With the negative side uh, facing into the collector. Then I'll add a current limiting resistor to the positive terminal. I'm using a 3.3K. 
And last but not least, we have to add our input to our transistor, which is ground. And that goes to the emitter of the transistor. So now, if we turn on the power, we go ahead and test it out. There we go, we have our light and it works. Now visually like this, there's not a difference. You can't tell any difference, it works the exact same. But if we, up, if we hook it up to an oscilloscope to take a closer look. All right, so now when we turn our output on with the button, we can see here our output turns on nice and cleanly without any voltage spikes. Now our push button here, it's not debounced, so it's gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. But as you can see, our IC turns on nice and cleanly, just like that. Now, if you're wondering why our outputs are flipped, well, that's just because the nature of the MPN transistor is to switch on a negative voltage. Therefore, our output is at positive, but then turning on negative. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you have any questions, you can post them in the comments section below. But like always, stay tuned for more content, and peace out.